So what I'd like to look at today is oscillators. Just touch on them for a little bit and uh, more specifically uh, get a little further in depth on the phase shift oscillator that we have here in front of us. Um, here, here's the diagram for what I've hooked up today. Um, single transistor and that's one of the reasons I'm using this particular oscillator to show some of the things that I'm going to show is it's quite easy to wire up, quite easy to get it going. Um, we have a little bit of a difference in this circuit here, but I'll, I'll come to that in a little while. Uh, you'll see this is fairly classic. Uh, it does some feedback through three capacitors here into the base. Uh, gives us a relatively decent sine wave. It's not too bad. Uh, now, one thing I would like to show here, and this is why we're using this, is how the gain affects the distortion. Uh, the more we try to push this thing, the more distorted it's going to get. It's its best operating position is just after it starts. We've gotten just enough gain, which for this particular oscillator needs to be about 29. So this circuit here, the gain portion of our circuit, needs to overcome all the losses through these capacitors and resistors here before they get back to the base again. So it needs a gain of about 29 to get back into the positive territory to keep this thing going again and again. Just like pushing somebody on a swing, you got to give them that little bit of a bump. Once it gets going, it's relatively easy to get it, keep it going, but you got to give it that little bump right here. So what we have, um, we've got basically our, our voltage divider here to bias our uh, transistor here. We end up with about 6.2 volts here. This isn't perfect. I did not try to get this exactly at four and a half. It's unnecessary for our purposes. Um, so I put a, a emitter resistor into here to make this a little more stable. You can actually run this. You can tie the emitter directly to the negative side or ground, if you want to call it. You can tie that directly there. But then you need to put a pot in up here, and it gets kind of finicky. It'll have too much gain or it'll have too little, and it's uh, pretty fussy. So we tend to settle the circuit down a little bit by putting an emitter resistor in here. <clears throat> but when we do that, the gain for the entire circuit is not enough. It's not 29, it's only about 10. It's 1K, 1K and 100K. It gives us a, a roughly 10 uh, gain. So what I've done here is I've put a, a bypass, a little bit of a bypass circuit in here that's adjustable as to how much I want to bypass. So as we start taking this uh, resistor right here and cranking it down towards zero, more of a short, basically, it brings in more effect of this 10 microfarad capacitor here. And that 10 microfarad at 2800 hertz, which is roughly what this circuit runs at, this 10 microfarad capacitor is equivalent to about, we'll call it 6 ohms. That's what it is. So to figure this out here, we take 2 times pi times our frequency, 2800 hertz, times the size of the capacitor, which is 10, uh, 10 microfarads. So that's, that's 10 microfarads. At this frequency and at this frequency basically only, this is a 6 ohm load here. So the 1K divided by the 6 ohm load, if this was shorted straight across, would give us about 160-ish. Uh, probably wouldn't go quite that because the beta is not that, that high for this guy, but it would give us a, um, give us more than enough to give us that 29 gain up here at that frequency. <clears throat> so there's two things going on here. There's the DC that you're you're biasing this whole little amplifier with. There's that DC, and then there's a different amount of gain for the AC, and that's that includes this. So I want to take a real quick look at. Uh, what we can do to think of a, this this particular circuit. Here's our circuit that I redrawn again, and if I if I take a look at this guy, but we only we only want to discuss the DC portion of this circuit. There is no DC current right here, so we can ignore that. That's gone. We can ignore this one right here too because this is a capacitor. There's not going to be DC wise. There's not going to be anything there. It's, it's a basic in, basically invisible. And over here, if we go from our uh, collector back around over here, we see there's a capacitor there. So that's gone. And there's a capacitor here. So this is also gone. And there's our DC circuit. 
that's the only portion that is affected by DC because all the capacitors block DC so there's nothing there. So we can do our little um, we can do our calculations on the DC portion of the circuit here to get the gain for it. So one other thing I wanted to briefly go over here is how does this oscillate? How do we get this thing to oscillate? Well you need to feed back into this part of the circuit right here a small amount of what comes out on this side and this transistor already gives you 180 degrees of phase shift. We need 360 so it has to be given those little nudges at exactly the right time. We have three capacitors here and you've probably read that capacitors have a 90 degree phase shift. Well that's an ideal capacitor. These are real capacitors and they don't give quite a 90 degree phase shift because they've got some inductance and various other things going on here. So it takes three of them to get that other 180 because we've got the 180 going from here. Of course, as the base of the transistor goes more negative, the collector goes more positive. So that's 180 degree phase shift. They're exactly opposites to each other. And then this gets fed back over here and we get 60 degrees of phase shift here, 60 degrees of phase shift here, and another 60 degrees of phase shift here. That all together, the 180 plus the 360s, gives us 360 degrees back into here. So I think it's time we have a look at the sine wave that this thing produces. We'll put the power to it and have a look at that. That sine wave looks not too bad by eye. Um, we've got about uh, 4 volts peak to peak roughly and we'll take and do some math on this thing and we'll, we'll use the fast Fourier transform. Uh, basically the spectrum analyzer that's built into this thing and we'll have a closer look at some of the things that our eye can't see. And we'll turn these on Turn this on, and the fast Fourier transform that's in this uh, oscilloscope uses what's on the screen. It calculates it, and if you have your levels are too high, stuff goes off the screen. You'll see that as, um, anyways, if it goes off the screen, it uh, kind of goes into some sort of hysterics and things don't work quite right, but we will take and fit this waveform on the screen here and I'm going to turn this down just ever so slightly and what we're particularly interested in here right now is this we're looking at the levels here we have our fundamental 2.8 kilohertz at about let's call it plus 2 dBV and we've got our second harmonic here at about minus 22 so there's about 24 dB of difference between the fundamental and the second harmonic. So 24 dB. So I'm going to take and turn the, turn the levels down a little bit, turn the output down, a gain down on the amplifier on this, and we'll see if we can get it stable somewhere here. The pot itself is a little on the, not the greatest side. And uh, turn it down some more. So there we have uh, our new levels now. Now we're at minus, a uh, little over minus 3, and our second harmonic here is now at minus 31. So we've got about 28 dB of difference. So as we uh, start turning our output down, our junk here, our second harmonic, third, fourth, and all the rest of them, start to decrease faster. So we now have plus 5 dB here, minus 18 on the second harmonic. Notice how much the third harmonic has come up. It's actually, uh, actually this is the third harmonic. That's that number right there because it takes the peaks. It doesn't take, the, doesn't take them in order. So minus 18. So our second harmonic here is actually at minus 20. You can see that it's further down. So sure brought the third harmonic up a lot by starting to drive it a little too hard. And if we take a look at our waveform, you can see it's not quite the best thing we have ever seen, that's for sure. Let's get rid of this. And we'll turn this guy off. Get that out of there. 
and you can see the distortion in this now. We haven't really gone up by that much, but nonetheless, you see the bottom is rounded, but it's kind of got a tilt to it here, and it's lopsided a little bit.